Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. The first step to great results in your IELTS exam is to understand the test format. Knowing the timing of each part, the structure, assessment criteria and the marking system is vital for your success. So many candidates apply to take the IELTS exam without really understanding what will happen on the day or how the exam is marked. That's pretty stupid. Since you're watching this video, you're not one of them, which is great. Well, these are just some of the things I cover in this video, so let's get started. The test format is the same wherever you take your exam. The exam is divided into four parts, writing, listening, reading and speaking. This ensures that your skills in all four components of the English language are tested. There are two versions of the exam, IELTS Academic and IELTS General, or General Training to give it its full name, and you can choose which one to take. All candidates take the same listening and speaking tests, but different reading and writing tests. The main difference is in the subject matter of the reading and writing texts. I'll give you more information when we look at the four parts in detail. I've also created a web page and video to help you choose which of the two exams is the right one for you. The link to them is in the notes below this video. If you want to see all the information in this video in written form, I've included a link to that page as well. The first thing you need to know is how long the exam lasts for. The total exam time is 2 hours and 45 minutes and it's divided up like this. Writing takes 60 minutes and involves two tasks. Listening takes 30 minutes, during which time you have to answer 40 questions. The reading test lasts 60 minutes and also has 40 questions. And the speaking test, which is a three-part conversation with the examiner, takes between 11 and 14 minutes. You'll take the writing, listening and reading parts of the exam on the same day, one after the other with no break in between them. Your speaking test may take place on the same day after a break or it may take place seven days either before or seven days after your main exam date. This will depend on your test centre. Do be sure to double check your dates as policies can change. Now for the details of each section of the exam. First the writing test. IELTS writing has two parts. First, task one, for which you must write a minimum of 150 words and second, task 2, which requires a minimum of 250 words. The second task, the longer of the two essays, carries twice as many points as the first, and you have 60 minutes to complete both tasks. If you've chosen to take the IELTS academic exam, you'll be given a graph, table, chart or diagram for task 1, and asked to describe, summarise or explain the information in your own words. For example, you may be asked to describe and explain data, describe the stages of a process, describe how something works or describe an object or event. For task 2, you'll be required to write an essay on a topic of general interest. Your essay will be a response to a specific point of view, a problem or an argument that will be stated in the question. Your response to both tasks should be written in a formal style. For candidates taking IELTS General, both writing tasks are based on topics of general interest. For task one, you'll have to write a letter requesting information or explaining the situation in relation to a specific circumstance. The letter may be written in a personal or semi-formal style as appropriate to the situation. The task 2 essay has the same brief as for the academic test, but you may use a more personal style than would be required in the academic essay. The writing test is designed to assess your ability in the following areas. The content of what you write, how you organise your ideas 
and the accuracy and range of your vocabulary and grammar. The criteria for any specific essay will depend on the type of task you're asked to complete. So for the academic writing test, these assessment criteria apply. For task one, your essay will be assessed in relation to your ability to achieve one or more of the following. Organize, present and possibly compare data. Describe the stages of a process or procedure. Describe an object or event or sequence of events and or explain how something works. For task two, you'll be assessed on your ability to present a problem to a solution, present and justify an opinion, compare and contrast evidence, opinions and implications, and or evaluate and challenge ideas, evidence or an argument. And here are the assessment criteria for the general writing test. Task one. Your letter will assess your ability to engage in personal correspondence and be assessed in relation to one or more of these skills. Elicit and provide general factual information. Express needs, wants, likes and dislikes. And express opinions, for example views or complaints. While for task two, you'll be assessed on your ability to outline a problem and present a solution present and justify an opinion, evaluate and challenge ideas, evidence or an argument. Now for the marking system. On this slide, you can see the overall assessment criteria for IELTS writing, as stated on the official website. First, task achievement or response, that is, to give an appropriate response to the task. Second, cohesion and coherence, which means presenting a well-structured essay. Third, lexical resource. To score well here, you'll need to use a range of appropriate vocabulary and use it correctly. And finally, grammatical range and accuracy, which requires a range of grammar forms that are used correctly. Each holds 25% of the marks. Next, we move on to the listening test. The timing is 30 minutes, plus 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your answer sheet. The test format for listening is made up of four sections. In each section, you'll listen to a recorded text, and then answer a series of questions on it. The text will be played only once. Over the course of the test, you'll hear a variety of voices and different native speaking accents. There are 40 questions in the test. You'll be asked a variety of different types of questions related to items from this list. Matching, multiple choice, short answer questions, plan, map or diagram labelling, and the completion of notes, sentences, summaries, forms, tables or flowcharts. The listening test has four sections. Section 1 is a conversation between two people set in an everyday social context. For example, booking tickets to the theatre. Section 2 is a monologue, also set in an everyday social context, such as a welcome talk for new college students. Section 3 is a conversation between up to four people set in an educational or training context. For example, a group of students discussing a university assignment. And section four is a monologue on an academic subject, such as a lecture on wildlife. You'll have time to look at material relevant to the test before the recordings start and to read the questions that you'll be asked. The listening test is designed to assess your ability to understand main ideas, understand detailed factual information, Recognise the opinions and attitudes of speakers. Recognise the purpose of the communication and follow the development of ideas or arguments. And as for the marking criteria, well that's very straightforward. Each correct answer is awarded one mark. Your score out of 40 is converted to the corresponding IELTS band scale level. The next part of the exam we're going to look at 
is the reading test, which, like writing, has different versions for IELTS Academic and IELTS General. Both versions are made up of three parts and have to be completed in 60 minutes. The difference between them is in the length and type of texts. There are 40 questions in the test and you'll be asked a variety of question types in order to assess a wide range of reading skills. The tasks will be selected from this list. Multiple choice, identifying information, identifying a writer's views, matching information, headings and sentence endings, completing sentences, summaries, notes, tables, flowcharts and diagram labels, and short answer questions. These are the text types you'll get for the academic reading test. All three sections will contain one long text taken from real books, newspapers, magazines or journals. The text will be of general interest and may contain diagrams, illustrations or graphs. If the text contains technical terms, a glossary will be provided. IELTS General, on the other hand, has three very different sections. Section 1 is made up of two or three short factual texts related to everyday life. For example, a hotel evacuation procedure, a series of related advertisements, or a course outline. Section 2 is two short factual texts related to work, such as a job description, staff training, or disciplinary procedures. Section three is one longer text of greater complexity. For example, general interest texts from books, newspaper, magazines, company brochures, or handbooks. Both versions of the reading test are assessed using the same criteria. These are your ability to read for gist, read for main ideas, read for detail, understand inferences and applied meaning, recognise the writer's opinions, attitudes and purpose, and to follow the development of an argument. The marking system is very simple. Each correct answer is awarded one mark. Your score out of 40 is converted to the corresponding IELTS band scale level. Finally, we come to the format of the speaking test. This section of the exam is made up of three parts and will last for 11 to 14 minutes in total. Part one is a short interview during which the examiner will ask you general questions about yourself and your life, things such as your home, family, interests, work or study. In part two, you'll be given a topic on which to speak for up to two minutes. The examiner may then ask you one or two questions about your topic. You'll have one minute for preparation, during which time you're allowed to make notes which you can refer to as you speak. Part three is a two-way discussion with the examiner. They'll ask you more questions about your part two topic giving you the opportunity to show a greater range of speaking skills. The speaking test is designed to assess your ability to communicate opinions and information on everyday topics, common experiences and situations, speak at length on a given topic using appropriate language and organising ideas coherently, express and justify opinions and analyse, discuss and speculate about issues. The marking criteria for the speaking test has four parts to it, each of which holds 25% of the marks. They are fluency and coherence, lexical resource, that's vocabulary, grammar range and accuracy, and pronunciation. The examiner will make an assessment of your skills related to these criteria as you speak and give you an appropriate score on the IELTS band scale. That brings us to the end of our overview. Understanding the IELTS test format is an important part of preparing for your exam. Think about this information as you practice your English skills and plan for your test day. We've covered a lot of detail in this video. If you want to go over it at a slower pace, you'll find it all on the IELTS test format page 
of my website ieltsjackie.com. I've added a link in the notes below. And do check out my many other videos as I've plenty more help to give you on all aspects of the IELTS exam. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching.